measuring U-joint operational angles. These U-joint clips will have to be removed. We're going to use some penetrating oil on them to make that removal easier. Caution must be taken because they may be rusted to the point that they will break. In this case, we need replacement clips or don't remove them if they look like they're going to break. I'm going to add additional lubricant on the rest of the U-joint in case I have to take the drive shaft off. It's imperative that this test be done on a drive-on rack so the suspension system can be compressed. Please note for demonstration purposes, this demonstration will be done on a rack with the suspension hanging down. The proper way to measure the angle will be at the bearing cap itself. The yoke surface is not a machine surface and therefore it might give you an inaccurate reading. I'm going to demonstrate the digital gauge and the bubble inclinometer. The inclinometer has a magnet that fits on the bearing cap. However, when placed on the bearing cap with the clip installed, it will not sit flat or secure. Therefore, the clip will have to be removed. Because the bearing cap is recessed, the digital gauge will not fit on the bearing cap without a special tool. Placing the digital gauge on the yoke might not give us the results that we're looking for since the bearing cap is the more accurate place to make the measurement. These offset battery pliers by Snap-on work really well to remove U-joint clips. Pinch the clip and carefully remove it without breaking it. I'm removing two clips, one from the drive shaft yoke and one from the pinion flange yoke. Rotate the drive shaft and the drive pinion yoke until the drive pinion yoke is straight up and down. I'm going to align that up with a point in the center line of the differential. Then place the inclinometer on the U-joint cap for the drive pinion yoke. This is a bubble gauge and we need to move the scale until the bubble is in the middle. Then we read the number on the scale. Look carefully at this scale. It reads just a tiny bit over 20 and a half degrees. We're going to call this 20.5 degrees. Write this value down, then rotate the drive shaft 90 degrees so that the drive shaft yoke is straight up and down in alignment with the same location on the differential drive pinion. Place the inclinometer onto the drive shaft yoke bearing cap and re zero the bubble. The drive shaft yoke measures just a tad over 27 degrees. We're going to call this 27 degrees. To obtain the drive shaft operational angle, subtract 20.5 from 27 to get the operational angle of 6.5 degrees. Write this down so we can compare that to the operational angle of the front U joint. This is the special tool I told you I made. It's a small round disc that has been machined flat to fit on the U-joint and it has a magnet in it so it will stick to the U-joint cap. I place a small white paint dot on it so I can make sure the direction of the disc is the same every time I make a measurement. After removing the retaining clip, the tool can be placed on the bearing cap. Rotate the drive shaft so it's straight up and down in alignment with the center of the differential drive pinion. Then place the digital angle gauge on the tool and center it. Turn it on and press the zero button. Remove the angle tool and the spacer and rotate the drive shaft 90 degrees, making sure to align the yoke with the center of the differential drive pinion. Now place the tool and the angle gauge onto the differential universal joint bearing cap for the drive pinion yoke. This tool will automatically calculate the angle of the universal joint without having to do any math. This reading of 6 degrees is extremely close to the 6.5 degree reading we got from the bubble gauge. Because this is digital, this is a little bit more accurate. Repeat the process with the front U-joint. First, we have to remove the retaining clip. 
When we rotate this U-joint, we notice that the other end doesn't use a clip. Instead, it uses two bolts and a strap and a tab on the end of the yoke that keeps the cap from coming out. It's worth noting that the flat edge of that strap sticks up higher than the flat edge on the yoke. Placing a digital gauge across the edge of this yoke would clearly create an unwanted angle and an inaccurate reading. Rotate the drive yoke so it's straight up and down. Align it with the center part of the center bearing. Place the tool and the digital gauge on the U-joint bearing cap and zero the gauge. Remove the angle gauge and the tool. Rotate the drive shaft 90 degrees. Place the tool back on the bearing cap for the driven yoke. Then place the angle gauge onto the tool. The angle gauge reads the U-joint operational angle directly on the display. The operational angle of the front universal joint is 4.35 degrees. We now compare that to our 6 degree operational angle of the rear U joint. Subtract 4.35 degrees from 6 degrees and we have an operational difference of 1.65 degrees between the front and the rear U joint. Now this is a little excessive, but remember, the suspension is hanging down and we're not on a drive-on rack, so this technically is not an accurate reading. When you're done with the measurement, reinstall the clip that holds the U-joint in place. Make sure the clip is properly seated. Make sure to use the pliers to pinch the clip to make certain it is inserted properly into the groove of the U-joint yoke. Repeat this process for the clips that you removed from the rear U-joint. Remember, this should only be done with the wheels on the ground or the vehicle on a drive-on rack. Otherwise, it will be inaccurate.